Yesterday we spoke about what you can do if you are finding yourself in a situation where it seems like your specific person is pulling away from you. But what if it's you that's losing interest? What if it's you that doesn't know if you really actually want them anymore? And you've tried so hard for so long to manifest them and now all of a sudden you're like, actually, can I see the menu again? <laughs> If that's the issue for you and you're finding yourself wondering, have I lost interest for my SP? What does this mean? This episode of Roxy Talks is for you. Stay tuned. What is up, my fellow dreamers and soul searchers? Thank you for joining me here for another episode of Roxy Talks, where we discuss confidence, mindset, manifestation, and more. I'm Roxy Lee. I'm a mindset coach, and I'm here to help you banish your negative thinking and limiting beliefs so you can bring love, clarity, and joy into your life. If you want to become the best at manifesting that you can possibly be, I'm hosting a live mental diet workshop on August 27th at 3 p.m. PST that is designed to help you get ready really, really clear and deliberate with your practice day in, day out, what you are going to do to take your manifestational power on the road. We're making this show the only show in town. And once you do this and you learn what works best for you and you implement it day in, day out, you will see results and you will see consistent results. So if you're interested in signing up for the mental diet workshop, you can do that at my website, roxytalks.com. We've also got the brand new Chillosaurus Rex merch by popular demand featuring this beautiful t-shirt. But how cute is she though, okay? Because my husband drew her. Hi. <laughs> the Chillosaurus Rex merch is officially available at my website, roxytalks.com. And just a reminder, we do have face masks as well. I want to donate the money to kids, something having to do with masks and COVID and education and I don't know. So help us figure out which charity to donate to, please. And all of the profits from the mask sales will go to that charity. I've also got a podcast, other workshops, courses, and coaching at my website, roxytalks.com. Of course, that link is in the description below. You can also join me on social media. I'm on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Now, before we get into this video, please hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. And if you're feeling generous, please like and share. That helps us reach as many people as possible and everyone deserves to know that they're in complete control of their reality. I remembered it this time, motherfuckers. <laughs> Cheers. So what would make someone lose interest in a person that they have been actively manifesting for insert time of period, time period here? <laughs> Get it together. Well, what I have learned from speaking to so many clients and seeing kind of like the progression of the journey of manifesting, because manifesting a specific person or manifesting a relationship, manifesting a person in general, there's this like trajectory and it's like literally everybody goes on it. And it's very, I mean, I guess it's not strange, but you know, in the beginning I didn't necessarily recognize it, but now having been coaching for about a year, it like, if you're manifesting a person, you're going to fall somewhere on the spectrum because it is like this, this arc of, of the steps you go through. And I have yet to see somebody not follow this exact arc. And in this process, there, it, there is a path that we take. And there is always a moment when you realize that it's not about them. It's about you. And it always has been and it always will be. This journey of manifesting a specific person leads you to recognizing that you need to be your number one priority and no one else can do that for you. And once you start treating yourself like a priority and intending that others do and not settling for less because you know better now, now you begin not only shaping the way that new relationships unfold or even the one we're working on, but you also begin manifesting a different version of yourself. As you grow and learn this process and understand that every single thing in your entire life is all responding to you, has been coming from you, will always be coming from you, and is part of your divine story, if you want to call it that. I've never used that phrase before, but... It's all part of that. So when you realize this, you start to understand that, okay, I really can't have anything, anything. And that anything could be 
every single solitary version of your SP or someone else, right? It's either or. I mean, I guess it's either them, someone else, or nobody, right? So you got a 50-50 chance getting through this process and realizing, all right, I can have absolutely anything that I want. Do I still want that? That's what this is about. When you reach this point of like, eh, maybe, it's because you understand that you no longer have to settle for that if you don't want to. Not saying that your SP is a settle, but generally for most people, when you get to this like, eh, kind of like meh point, it's because you realize like maybe you were settling before you had this realization, right? It makes sense. Before you got to this point where you understood it's all about me and I can have absolutely anything I want, if you didn't have those two keys, you would not be able to unlock this door. Therefore, you wouldn't know what was behind it and what is behind it is, ah, maybe I was settling. <laughs> maybe because I couldn't see that there was so much abundance beyond those doors that I thought that everything that I could see that was in front of those doors was all there was for me. But now that I see that that was just the tiniest narrow scope of what is actually possible for me, do I still want this thing that I used to want when I didn't realize I could have anything? Or do I still want this thing that I manifested when I was at a lower point than I am now? And it's not that you can't get your SP nor any random version of them, the absolute best of the best version of them that you could ever possibly conceive of. Of course you can have that, but again, the question still begs to be asked. Do you still want it when you know you can have absolutely anything? Is that still good enough for you? Does it still tick all your boxes even when it ticks all the boxes? Do we have more now? It doesn't really matter. This is all on you. This is no judgment for me. No judges here. But really, you want to be examining the way that you are considering these situations and what is happening here. Why are you feeling this way? Be honest with yourself. Don't worry about how much time you have spent manifesting this person or how much you might be indebted to them or anything. You're not tied to anything unless you tie yourself to it. So if you find yourself tied to something you don't want to be tied to anymore, untie it and understand that it's okay to say, you know what? I'm open. SP or not, anybody that I manifest into my life, especially when I am thinking this way consciously and choosing to actively manifest the situation and person that I want, of course it's going to work out for me. It's going to work out better than I could have ever imagined. Think about your best relationship ever, the best situation you've ever been in, and understand that you were not as advanced in your mindset as you are in this very moment then. Okay? So if you had that then, when you didn't know what you know right in this very moment, then of course it can be so much better if you intend it to be. So no matter what is going on, whether you give up your specific person or not, you will always experience something amazing if you intend it to be. If you know that whatever relationship you allow yourself to get attached to will unfold in the most magical ways that you don't even want to try to consider because you don't want to let, mm -mm, you do it universe, you show me what you can do. The more you do that, the more free and beautiful your relationship can become. And that's with anybody. That's even with yourself, with life, your relationship with your own reality here on earth. Reality. Air quotes if you're listening on the podcast. Now, another possibility is that you might not necessarily want to give up your SP, but you're kind of just like, Meh, I'm not worried about you anymore, person. Like, I got that on lock. I am not stressed about how this comes about, nor when, nor how, whatever. It's just, I know it's happening. And if it's not here yet, then it's unfolding. I'm not stressing about it. I got other shit to focus on. And that's okay too. Consider that a sweet spot. Consider that the space where you allow your SP to be their best version and also maybe another person to come through and sweep you off your feet, okay? We want to get corny with it, but... That sweet spot, that indifference of like, I mean, like, cool, man, like, no love lost here, but just like, I'm gonna be happy whether I have you or not, and I don't need to have you to be happy. That's for me what worked in my relationship. That emotion 
And that declaration is what changed everything for me. That's what made my marriage happen. If I had not done that, that way, that day, I don't, I don't even know. I don't know where my, I don't, I never really thought about it like this. Like that, that moment was very defining in our lives because that was the moment that I realized I needed to let go of the old shit that I was holding on to and maybe I didn't realize I was demanding of him, but I probably was. I mean, I wanted more than what he was giving me, right? Than he may have been comfortable giving me at the time. So I had my own lesson to learn of realizing like, bitch, you can be happy regardless. You don't need him. You are the happiness you're looking for. And yes, I would love to be with him, but I'm going to be okay either way. So I can step away from this, separate myself from it. And when I did that, simultaneously, that caused him to experience his own shit or get off the pot moment because that's what happened on his end. Because I, fuck you, motherfucker, I changed my Facebook status. And honestly, I didn't think he would know because he never goes on, he never goes on Facebook. So I was like, he won't even notice. I was, it was like, for me, it was my own declaration because we weren't together, right? Like we were Facebook official, but we didn't have the title. See how fucked up it was? <laughs> for me, apparently. So it was really a moment of me making peace with myself, saying, bitch, you don't need this. You are fine without it. You can go find somebody to treat you amazingly and you will find it. It is out there for you. So I changed my status to single, not knowing that Facebook would let him know. So he got a notification on his phone and said, Roxy changed her status to single. And he like, oh shit. And he realized in that moment that I wasn't fucking around anymore. <laughs> I wasn't going to play the game. And his internal conversation with himself was, okay, you like this person. You do like, you do like her. Do you want to let go of this and start over potentially with someone new or who knows when someone new might come along? Or do you want to explore this and go down this road with this person that you actually do want to be with? And thankfully, he chose the latter. He chose that. I, I stopped trying to choose for him. I stopped trying to tell him in the 3D, right? Like I'm thinking back because I didn't know I was manifesting. I stopped trying to tell him and control his life and decide what he, no, sorry, sir. If you don't want to be with me, my bad. I am so sorry. Like, let me like, let me just, I don't need, I'm sorry. Like, I don't need to do this. Like I am happy on my own. I can be with anybody and I will have an amazing relationship. I left that situation feeling empowered with this bright horizon. I was excited to break up with somebody that I thought I was going to marry. I was happy because I felt free. Finally, I was so sad and consumed and burdened with this. Why won't he just story? I'll link it above if you haven't seen it, that I couldn't, like, I couldn't see past it. And I was not happy. And obviously, like, it just wasn't making any of us happy. So when I decided, like, I can be happy either way, like, I'm, I'll be friends with this person. We always have been friends since the moment we met. So there was never bad blood between us. We've never, like, we don't even fight. Like, we really get along really well. So it just was like, it, it just had to happen. I had to cut that tie and understand he was not the only answer. But then of course, that's what made him be the answer. And I, and I, I don't know what was at play. I knew I was going to marry him the moment I met him. So I can't, I don't know. I don't know what the universe does and how it works in its ways. But me deciding that I didn't need that relationship anymore and it wasn't fulfilling me is what made my relationship turned fulfilling my perspective changed on what I was telling about myself. I was like, bitch, you can have anybody you want. You are the hot piece. I was like, I had never been single with confidence before. And so I was like ready. Oh God, I was so excited to just go be single. Roxy, like this Roxy, like, oh, you, mm -hmm. I set my eyes on you. Better watch out. And the funny thing is I never actually got to be that Roxy because from that moment forward, my husband came through and I've been pretty much wiped up ever since. My point is, again, it's all in the way you define it. It always is the way you define it because it is what you're saying it is.
So if you are losing interest, don't say you're losing interest. Say that you are growing. Say that you're getting better at your craft. You're understanding like, oof, man, I can have anything. You are detaching if you want to call it that. You are seeing who is really in control here. And the more indifferent you can be with your manifestations, I'm sorry to say, it might sound cold. I'm not sorry to say it, but it might sound cold. The more indifferent you can be, the better off you are at manifesting things. If you can shut down your feelings while your manifestation is in that like probability phase, that superposition that like not here yet, it could be anything. So keep your thoughts on track and on point. If you can turn off your feelings, the negative ones, right? The, the, the negative ones, the, the unproductive ones, the this isn't here, the why not, the longing, the yearning, the missing, the absence, the lack, the doubt, the fear, the worry, all that shit, the anxiety. If you can turn those off while your manifestation is in progress and then turn it back on once it gets there, but turn it on, you know, positive. Yes. Amazing. Abundance, love, joy, appreciation, support, humor, passion, whatever the fuck you want. Turn that back on when you need it, when it's good for you. I'm going to start doing that. I like, I like the analogy. I like the way that it worked out in my head. I saw like the little waterworks from Monopoly, like the cartoon, like squeaky, rusty faucet turning on. And I'm good at shutting down feelings. I can just like, maybe that's Scorpio. I don't know, but like I can shut down a feeling all day. So to me, it's all about finding what works, making it work for me. What works in my life? How do I do this? How do I wrangle this fucking Bronco? If it can be tamed, then I'm going to tame it. I'm going to tame it. You can choose that for yourself as well, but I like the idea of uncovering these things. I like the idea of being in total control. I like the idea of fine tuning my shit so that everything works out for me. Cause I like working on stuff. I like figuring things out and, and, and applying myself and seeing the fruits of my labor. So when I put that energy onto manifestation, it serves me very well. And that's all I'm trying to do here on this channel. If you are at this point where you are finding yourself at the power position, hold on tight because you are there. You are there. And now it's time to focus and keep your story straight. So I want you to comment down below. I can have absolutely anything that I want and I know it. I can have absolutely anything that I want and I know it. That's it. Anything I want, anytime, it's mine and I know that and I don't forget. I never will. I always remember that. This is what our mental diet is all about. It is about choosing the thoughts in every single moment because you can. And when you master that, it becomes, well, first of it comes much, much easier. You don't have to like try so hard and like do it all the time. It becomes its own process, but it also takes over and you start to be able to turn autopilot back on a little bit and kind of lean back and allow the universe to guide you, or let me, let me rephrase that, to drive you while you guide it. You be your own navigational system and then let the universe drive. You will find yourself at your manifestation, no matter what it is, specific person or otherwise, easily and faster than you ever thought possible when you stop holding on so tight. When you let go of the, the reins and the fear and the doubt and then just like, God, to make it happen because it'll happen if you just allow it to happen on its own. Being patient, being a Chilosaurus Rex <laughs> pays off. Last week I said patience is a currency. I meant that. It is. It pays off to hang back, lay in wait, lay in the shadows. Not in a creepy way, but just back a little bit instead of being so aggressive on things physically, even mentally, and just know that they're happening no matter what you do and you couldn't stop it if you tried. So if you stop trying, it'll happen even faster. We're discussing all of that and how to make this your reality, your day in, day out, consistent practice 
in the live mental diet workshop happening August 27th, 3 p.m. PST via Zoom. You can sign up for that workshop at my website, roxytalks.com. Of course, that link is in the description below. Don't forget, we also have all of the brand new Chillosaurus Rex merch, including the face masks which all of the profits for the face masks are going to some sort of children's educational benefit fund. Please leave your suggestions in the comments below. I also host a monthly fundraiser right now. We are working to reach our threshold for our Yemen Reconstruction and Relief Fundraiser, which you can find at my website, roxytalks.com. Of course, that's also below as well. Once we hit our threshold for Yemen, we will be setting up a fundraiser for Lebanon. So if you're interested in donating to these causes, please check out the fundraisers tab on my website, roxytalks.com. I've also got podcasts, other courses, workshops, and coaching at my website, roxytalks.com. Of course, that link is below. You can also join me on social media. I'm on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And don't forget to join my Facebook group, Black Moon Society. It's a great community for like-minded people who are helping each other manifest. Here on the Roxy Talks channel, we go live every Monday at noon-ish PST for Q&A. And I've got brand new videos out every Tuesday through Friday. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell notification so you never miss an update. And if you're feeling generous, please like and share. That helps us reach as many people as possible. And everyone deserves to know that they are in complete control of their reality. We're all raising our vibrations together. You have the power. I believe in you.